Margaritaville at Sea. Who's it for? Who's it definitely not for? And is it really as bad as everybody on YouTube is trying to make it look? We are gonna get into my entire experience on Margaritaville at Sea in this video today, and you might be surprised. Welcome here on board the Celebrity Equinox, and if you're thinking, Uh, Celebrity Equinox? I thought this video was about the Margaritaville ship. It is, but I'm doing a side-by-side -side cruise, meaning I left one ship, the Margaritaville at Sea Paradise, and on the same day I boarded the Celebrity Equinox here, so I kind of did a big drastic change in, I mean, let's be honest, the Margaritaville at Sea Paradise is one of the least expensive cruises you can book right now, if not probably the least expensive cruise. And Celebrity is a higher level experience. At least that's what they claim to offer and that's what the price would reflect. But while I'm on this ship, I wanted to take the time to tell you all about the Margaritaville experience from the beginning to the end, every day, everything we did every day, and I'm gonna show you a lot of what I'm talking about to let you know how the experience was, at least for me. I'm Morgan from the very unofficial travel guides. I've been making travel videos for over 15 years of popular and not so popular tourist destinations to give you a very honest, unofficial look at what it's like to be there. And I also have a book. It's a collection of stories of crazy, fun things that have happened to me while traveling around the world. It's called Getting Stitches on a Cruise Ship, available on Amazon now. One of the first things that is different about Margaritaville at Sea is not only that the price is so low, but when you actually book the cruise and pay for it, you're basically checked in. That is the end of the process. On other cruise lines, like Celebrity, like Royal Caribbean, like NCL, after you book the cruise, you'll be getting mails, invitations to upgrade certain experiences on board, buy the drinking package, things like that. On Margaritaville, you have to do it all in the original booking process. And you can get a cruise with Margaritaville for a very, very low price. And then there are certain things that you can add to your experience to heighten it a little bit. And we chose to take the License to Chill package, which offered several different uh, amenities and upgrades. I wanted to get that to show you what that is like as well. We're talking about dinner in the steakhouse, a champagne uh, breakfast in the steakhouse, a $150 spa credit, it, things like that. We paid a little bit extra for it and I would say if you're going to be doing a Margaritaville at Sea cruise and you have this in your budget, this was definitely a very nice little upgrade. Another thing that was a little bit different from what most other cruise lines are like. When we got to the harbor, first of all, the harbor building, the port terminal for Margaritaville at Sea in West Palm Beach is pretty nice. It seemed really new, seemed very modern, very clean, very bright and airy. And with the ship right next door, it was just a really cool sort of uh, vacation vibe to begin the whole experience. Here's the first piece of advice I have to give to you. They say you can arrive at the uh, terminal starting at 10.30 in the morning, but from what I understand, you won't be able to board the ship before noon, so it kinda doesn't make a lot of sense to get there super early because then you're gonna end up waiting around in the terminal like we did because we got there basically right at 10.30 and weren't allowed to board the ship until about 20 past 12, so you kinda have to decide, okay, would I rather wait at home or in my hotel or in a Starbucks or whatever, or would I rather wait in the terminal? After you get checked in and get your sailing card, your they're called something different on every cruise line. I don't remember what they're called on Margaritaville. Set sail pass, you know, the thing you need to get into your room and to check in and out of the ship. Once you get your card, another thing that's different on Margaritaville is in the terminal between the counters and the seating area, there are several tables set up and that is where you can book your spa reservation, your dining reservations. And so you basically have all those things set up before you board the ship and not after you get on the ship, which is nice because the experience is so short. Why waste time from the fun you could be having on board if you can just get it done while you're waiting to board the ship in the terminal? Makes sense. Check-in went really smoothly. The people were very friendly, very helpful, and then we were guided to the extra waiting room for people with some kind of upgraded package or a suite. This was a smaller room with some more comfortable seats and some snacks and drinks. By the way, a lot of people were asking this when they came in, so let me just clear it up. None of the drinks served in this VIP lounge are alcoholic drinks, just like coffee, juice, 
juice and iced tea, I think. Shortly before 12, the VIP representative came into this room and took us through the whole boarding process, took us through everything that was included in our packages and let us know how to make sure that we were getting the most out of it. She had this fun, friendly uh, presentation and what I thought was interesting is she repeated everything twice. So she was like, on day two, you will have the champagne breakfast. On day two, you will have the champagne breakfast. The champagne breakfast happens in the steakhouse and it's really something you shouldn't miss. The champagne breakfast happens in the steakhouse. It's really something you shouldn't miss. I think she's used to dealing with older people who need things repeated. Uh, me included. When it was time to board the ship, all the VIPs were put in a line and <laughs> it was kind of interesting because then you have to walk through the terminal building and they have all the people who are not VIPs sort of roped off on the side and it felt like there was kind of like a red carpet atmosphere about it. Everybody standing on the right and left side watching us VIPs sashay onto the ship. And then we were on board and our fun experience for those next two days began. First lunch was in the buffet restaurant, which is called the Port of Indecision, which is funny because you know, when you go to the buffet, you have all these things to decide and you don't really have to make a decision. You can just have a little bit of everything. And was the food at the same quality of Disney Cruise Line? Was the food at the same quality as here on the Celebrity Equinox? No. And you know what? For $99 for the entire cruise, I wasn't expecting it to be. The food was fine. The selection was a little bit smaller than what you would expect on maybe one of the smaller, like I think probably the smallest ship that we've been on is the NCL Jade. And yeah, this buffet was even smaller than that. But what was being offered was presented well. There are two central stations with, you know, things like veggies and meat, roasted potatoes, Indian dishes. Then on one side, there is a make your own pasta bar where somebody would whip it all up in a pan for you. On the other side, there is a panini station where you can get a toasted sandwich made. And then out to the back is this really great area where they also have a burger bar and outdoor seating. And this was just such a fun vibe back there. We really enjoyed sitting back there. Not every cruise ship offers outdoor seating for the buffet restaurant. And I think especially if it's a ship that usually cruises someplace warm. Why not? I love sitting outside when I'm on a ship. The sail away party was a big party. People are not going on the Margaritaville cruise because they want to relax and be quiet. A lot of the people and the general vibe on this ship, it is a party ship. And I mean, if you've ever been to a Margaritaville restaurant, that's what it's like. So for anybody who may be complaining about the party and the people consuming alcohol and singing and dancing, I can only say it again, what were you expecting? But the Sail Away party was a lot of fun to watch, at least for us. We were not gonna participate in that. That's not our vibe, at least it wasn't that day. And shortly after the Sail Away party, we had our wine tasting, which was included in the price of License to Chill. I didn't record a lot of the wine tasting because we were sitting with some uh, other cruisers and we ended up having a good fun conversation with them. It was two college buddies who had uh, yeah, gone to school together and since then their lives have changed and her family is here and her family is here and they were cruising together for like a girl's weekend. I didn't want to disturb them by whipping out my camera, but Marcus and I drink a lot of wine at home. We live in Europe. We have access to a lot of really high quality wines for a uh, probably little bit less money than you would pay for them over here. And we were actually pretty impressed by the wines that were offered in this wine tasting. They didn't seem like they were at the lower end of the price range. They seemed like better than most of the wines that we buy and drink at home. Just came from the wine tasting and now it is time for the safety trail. So the wine tasting <laughs> Can you tell that we were at an alcohol event? But the wine tasting started at three on the first day and went for an hour. We had four wines to taste. And honestly, Marcus and I, we drink a lot of wine. We kind of know our way around wine and they were pretty good wines. I was telling the girls who were sitting with us, Amanda and Carly, that wine is a lot like music, that like you can't really prove it's good or bad. Wine is wine, music is music. Either you like it or you don't like it. That doesn't mean it's good or bad. As far as the 
wines that we tried in the tasting, Marcus and I both thought that they tasted quite good. Definitely a nice perk to have with this license to chill package that we booked. We are at our muster station now, which is in the casino, and waiting for that to happen. After the wine tasting, we explored the ship, and then on that evening is when we enjoyed our steak restaurant dining experience, which was also part of License to Chill. Of course, as somebody who doesn't like to eat meat or fish, the steak restaurant is not going to be a highlight for me, but the food that we got was excellently prepared, at least as good as anything we've had on Royal Caribbean or NCL, and the service was very attentive, very friendly, at least what I would expect for a sort of higher level onboard upcharge dining experience. And that night, there were two different musical shows offered in the main theater. The main theater is a comfortable space, a little bit different setup than... I would say a traditional sort of musical theater. It's kind of like a half arena style. It reminded me a little bit of, what are those dining experiences called where it's like you're seeing horses and people, you know, like jousting and stuff. What are those called? You know what I mean? Dang it, why can't I think of it right now? Medieval nights or something like that. We have the License to Chill VIP package, which allowed us to sit down here in this area. But for the second show, we just came and sat wherever we wanted. And it wasn't that hard to get a pretty good seat, even though we came like maybe 15 minutes before the show began. Anyways, it's sort of like a half of uh, an arena, and then the stage is still at the front. And these shows, we really enjoyed them. The level of talent on stage, just as good as the bigger cruise lines, live singing, live music. Both of the shows were musical reviews where it was just about like singing and dancing and having fun, not trying to tell a story, not trying to create art, just trying to entertain. And we enjoyed both of them. Were they at the level of the original Broadway style productions that you see on Disney Cruise Line? No. But for $99, I wasn't expecting them to be either. And because we had just flown in the night before, and if you want to see more about our experience getting from home to Florida with the poor choice of airline seat that I took thinking it would be an upgrade and the hotel that we stayed at that was kind of falling apart, that is in a video that I posted recently here on the channel, so go check that out as well. But we were feeling a little jet lagged, so we went to bed early that night and did not go to any sort of late night party. However, we ended up getting woken up at about one o'clock in the morning by loud people walking up and down the hallways and there were a room of kids across from us where I think the parents were staying probably on the other side with an outside view and they were in the inside cabin and these kids were loud and obnoxious at one o'clock in the morning and I had to be that guy who opened the door and told them you kids have to calm down, it's too late. And that's the first time I've ever done that on any ship but to be honest, I also had to do it now here on the Equinox. The people staying in this cabin over here are loud and obnoxious and they're smoking on their balcony all the time. So yeah, on a ship like Margaritaville, which is a party ship, people are loud and obnoxious at night, but here is a perfect example that it can happen to you on any ship. So I'm going to tell you about everything that happened on the next day and the final morning right after this commercial break. Did you get one? What was it about? Write it in the comments below. The next morning, we went to another thing that was part of the License to Chill package, and that is the champagne breakfast where you are offered free-flowing mimosas, and they also had a couple other drinks offered, alcoholic and non-alcoholic. Once again, service good, food preparation and presentation, excellent. Remember, in the cost, you're paying for where you're staying, so like your hotel room and this food. We paid more than 99 because of this License to Chill package, Package, but this is sort of the quality that's offered on board. And that afternoon, we went to the lunch buffet again, and neither one of us went away hungry. They had enough selection, and what was prepared was prepared nicely. I think there was enough variety for even picky eaters, and I know because I'm one of them. We did notice that the buffet did get very crowded for lunch on that day. So one piece of advice I can give you is probably get there super early, or maybe go there later, like towards the end of lunchtime. But remember, just like on any ship, at the end of a service, things are gonna be a little bit picked over. So the second day is the day where you can go on land. They have a lot of excursions offered. 
we didn't leave the ship. We didn't go on land at all. We didn't book any excursions because I wanted to have enough time to get some work done to film around the ship and to play pickleball. Y'all know I play tennis at home and I love tennis. I probably talk about tennis too much, but on our transatlantic on Royal Caribbean, I played pickleball for the first time and kind of thought this is actually pretty fun. Here they have like a full on actual pickleball court. You can check out the paddles at the towel desk, I guess. And at uh, 3.30 today on the day that we're here uh, in the Bahamas, there is an organized pickleball event, which I'm going to check out and I'm looking forward to it. The ground surface was not the best and the crew member who was running pickleball didn't really know the rules of pickleball. But hey, I still got some shots in. My team won and I got a free margarita. Got a free margarita. Got a free margarita. Which I wasn't expecting actually. So we did not go on land, but one thing I wanted to tell you that makes Margaritaville at sea really different than any other cruise line that I know of in North America is, you can use this ship as purely a form of transportation to get to the island, and then you can stay on the island in one of the resorts for a couple days, and then use it as transportation back to Florida. You don't have to do what we did and stay on the ship for this like day and a half. So a very interesting thing to consider and um, maybe something that we would do next time. On the second evening in the theater, there was a comedian performing. We saw the first show and it was good. We laughed. We had a good time and once again I don't think I don't think we were able to stay awake late enough to make it to adults only comedy but we did go to the casino and that's something else I wanted to tell you about the Margaritaville at Sea Paradise also has a I want to say small casino but I have experienced smaller casinos of course this ship is not a huge ship it is the smallest ship that we have ever cruised on even considerably smaller than the NCL Jade but the casino was big enough. We enjoy playing the slots. They had the modern kind of slots with all the bells and whistles that we like to play. They also have table games and at times they have a $5 blackjack. So, you know, for people who like to gamble on a budget, I think it's hard to find $5 blackjack in Las Vegas nowadays, but they do have it on Margaritaville. That evening we went to the main dining room and this is where it kind of gets interesting. The menu in the main dining room looked impressive. This was a much bigger dining room than I was expecting. I don't know why. It has to be big enough for everybody to sit down. The atmosphere inside was nice and it didn't seem like a party atmosphere. The waiters were not dancing around waving their napkins like I think they do that on Carnival and Costa, don't they? But it took quite a while for our waiter to come visit us and when we ordered he seemed so confused. It it seemed like he didn't know what was on the menu because every time we said what we would like to eat, he just looked so confused. Like, uh, okay, the the citrus salad? I don't know, maybe nobody else was ordering what we were ordering. Then we said we'd like to order some wine and he said, okay, I have to send somebody over to take the wine order. And that person didn't come until after we had our first course on the table. Speaking of first courses, Marcus likes to eat meat and fish. Marcus eats basically everything. And I, as you know, am a very picky eater. We do not order the same things usually. And somehow this waiter just brought Marcus everything that I ordered. He didn't bring what I ordered and Marcus ordered. He brought just two of everything I ordered, which is, you know, Marcus is not into any kind of confrontation or stress in situations like this. So I was forbidden to say anything about it, but we left there with Marcus feeling pretty disappointed because he didn't get what he wanted to eat. Personally, I think if you don't say something, then you're not gonna get it in these situations, but he would rather just sort of let it slide. Anybody else out there who has a partner like that, husband, wife, whatever, that would rather just ignore the stress and deal with sort of the consequences, then say something to get what they want. I mean, Marcus got 0% of what he ordered that night, except for the wine, we did get the correct wine. And then, yeah, the comedy show, and then we went to bed. The next morning was then the final morning on the ship. We had to leave the cabins by nine o'clock, but breakfast was being offered starting at 6.30, and that was all fine. Breakfast on board was 
a typical cruise ship buffet breakfast. They had everything I think you would expect, and neither one of us left the breakfast room hungry. We did hang out in our cabin until about nine because we had this transportation package booked through the Brightline train, which is this train that now runs from Miami up to Orlando, stopping at certain stops along the way. And when you book your ticket for Brightline, you can also automatically book Uber transfers to pick you up at the port take you to the train and then take you from the train to the other port, which is what we did. It worked really easily. And I will also be making a video about that, which will probably be online before this video, but at the moment, I'm not sure right now. At disembarkation, which is leaving the ship, also people with any kind of VIP package are kind of taken along a quicker route to get through immigrations. When you get back to port, you have to go through passport or document control. It was a little bit chaotic. The lines were pretty long, but that's not anything that's necessarily only Margaritaville that happens a lot of times. And that was another time that we were happy to have this license to chill upgrade because it got us through this sort of, I don't know, annoying standing around situation much quicker. And that's basically the whole experience. And so now who do I think this is for and who would I not recommend it for? I'm gonna try to wrap it up in just really a few quick sentences. It's definitely for people who just kind of want to have a nice little getaway, who have low expectations, who maybe are into having a loud, fun party time, and who are not used to or expecting anything that could be remotely considered luxurious. That doesn't mean that we found it awful or trashy. Well, to tell you the truth, some of the passengers were pretty trashy. Trashed and trashy. Yeah, but if you want just a quick little getaway with a very intense good time, some great live music, singing and dancing in a relaxed atmosphere, I think for the price, this was really, really great. I would not recommend it if you are expecting or if you have the necessity to feel like these two days are gonna be luxurious or quiet. I also wouldn't necessarily recommend it for kids. And yeah, the ship and the cabin were showing signs of age in certain areas. If you looked hard enough, you would see things that need to be attended to. But honestly, it is the same way here on the Equinox. Just in the cabin alone, I could point out three or four things that really need to be taken care of. So if you are used to the level of service and clientele, unlike Azamara cruises or, you know, celebrity or higher, and you don't feel comfortable with anything less than that, then of course, don't cruise with Margaritaville. It's not made for you. We definitely would do this again. And like I said, we might use it to just get to the island and then have a fun island stay and cruise back. And I'm really curious to hear what you think now after seeing my review of the ship. Did I maybe change your mind? Is it something that you might consider doing now? Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. And I look forward to seeing you back here on the very unofficial travel guide soon. Bye-bye.